question is, uh, what are some of the common complaints that you receive uh, when about lawyers? You know, what, what are folks saying? Well, you know, there's always the, um, the, the frivolous lawsuit. You know, mm -hmm. there's too many frivolous lawsuits. Sure. And, uh, you know, that's one of the biggest, I think, misconceptions uh, out there because there's a system in place to prevent frivolous lawsuits from ever seeing the light of day. Uh, every court, every uh, case out there goes through a process whereby the judge can throw that case out once that judge, if he believes that there's not a claim there, uh, if he believes that it's a frivolous lawsuit. And the fact is, is that, uh, you know, very few claims are filed and and don't make it through that process because it costs money. It costs uh, our law firm every time we That's file right. a case. It costs a filing fee. It costs uh, deposition fees. It costs us to take doctors. So there's no way that you would file a case that was going to cost your firm money, uh, where you couldn't prove your the, the legal side of things. So I just think that uh, you know we've heard about McDonald's. We can talk about that if somebody wants to talk about it, which is a complete farce. It was all put together uh, by an industry trying to make people think that there were too many frivolous lawsuits out there, uh, when that just is not the case. There, the judge has the final say as to whether or not mm -hmm. a case is frivolous, and uh, frankly, attorneys can get in trouble if they do file them. And Ken, tell everybody about, uh, you know, we read about some of these verdicts. You mentioned yeah. McDonald's a moment ago. Tell them about the process that a verdict has to go through before it is actually paid. Let's say a verdict does seem excessive. Mm -hmm. Is there a remedy out there for that? Well, sure. First, the judge, uh, let's say a jury awards, uh, like in McDonald's case, uh, $4 million, or $2.8 million, sorry. Uh, well, the judge first cuts the, if he doesn't believe that the evidence uh, supported that type of judgment, then the judge will cut it down uh, on motion by the defense. So, uh, for, for instance, in the uh, McDonald's case, the judge cut that verdict down to $480,000, and she had third-degree burns mm -hmm. on, her, on her private parts, mm -hmm. okay? Well, then after that, there's the appeals process, where, again, it can be appealed to the Alabama Court of Civil Appeals or the Alabama Supreme Court, and then they can cut it again, or they can reverse the case and make you go try it again if the damages aren't what, what fits within Alabama law. So there are a number of stop gaps Mm -hmm. that, that before uh, a, a verdict is ever paid. And Ken, isn't it fair to say that if a verdict comes in that seems unreasonably low, that it's much more difficult for a plaintiff to get money added to a verdict or a chance at a new trial than it is to cut a verdict that seems excessively high? Yeah, ver very rarely happens. It just, if a verdict comes in extremely low and doesn't support uh, or, or doesn't, uh, uh, I guess, portray the true injuries that a person has, has sustained, then they're usually just out of luck and, and have to live with it. So that's, that's just that.